okay, then if I'm going to answer any questions. California. Okay, if I'm going to answer any questions. Okay. Okay, which is this is a lawful traffic stop. You need to present your driver's license, your registration, and your insurance. That's all I need from you. Okay, if I'm going to answer any questions or present any papers you to you, to then questions. I want an attorney. I don't need you to say anything. Just I'd like an attorney. That are required. I'd like an attorney. You don't need an So, I'm not going to do this back and forth with you. I need your driver's license, registration, and insurance. If you do not provide that, I'm going to remove you from the car. You will be arrested, and I'm going to tow the car. If you want to remain on that car, can you just sit right there or stand on the sidewalk? I, I, I'm going to stand right here. You're not going to order me around, okay? Officer you, Gerald Maldonado. You're detained right now, okay? And, uh, so, and what crime have I committed? Just have a seat right what there. What crime have I committed? Have a seat right there. What crime? You might be wondering why this traffic stop's happening. Well, it's happening because of a previous incident. This. I knew her on the right. Wow. If you deprive me of my wow. liberty, I am going to sue you. Carmel. That's right. Teresa Bacola sued the Carmel by the Sea Police Department because they infringed on her rights and violated them. In fact, the cop with the blue mask is the same cop that she sued on this traffic stop. Immediately after she sued them, showed them what accountability really was, and brought them to court, they retaliated on an unlawful traffic stop. Teresa's been watching Accountability for All for a while, so she reached out to us via email showing us this video and saying this. Titled, I forced two Carmel by the Sea police officers to leave with their tails tucked between their legs. Hey Josh, I recently got out of a very dangerous traffic stop and you were instrumental in that. I saw one of your videos where you talked about Pennsylvania v. Mims. I read the case and was able to refer to that in my body of knowledge when under duress and being confronted by a violent police officer. He almost ripped me out of my car. Interesting what happens when they find out they're already getting sued by you. And if you want to know the video that she's referring to that she watched where I helped her in this situation, here it is. Sir, please get back in the car. Sir, Name the case law. Sir, Name the, the case law. Sir, argue, I don't have to stay in the vehicle. Sir, please get back in your car. Sir. Pennsylvania versus Mims. Okay, sir, I don't have to be in the. I don't have to be sir, in the vehicle. You're not taking argue, control sir. of me. Am I detained? You are. Yes, you are. I'm detained. Sir. What crime do you suspect sir. me of committing? We're sir. stopping you for a violation. You're stopping me. Am I the driver? You're a passenger in the vehicle. Okay. So you. Pennsylvania v. Mims sir. states that you please can only take car. control of me if you suspect me of a crime. I want your supervisor. That's why I'm out right now. Do you have one on the way? Officer Trask is dealing with that, okay? Okay, perfect. It's hard for us to do that. We have to deal with you outside the car. You're not here for me. You're a passenger. You're not here for me. You can't take control of me unless I have committed a crime. Pennsylvania versus Mims. You happen to pull over a civil rights activist. And there's the walk of shame. Sir, please sit back in your car. I need your supervisor. I'm staying here for my safety. My safety, sir, I'm, I'm not worried about your safety. It's pro you have no probable cause, reasonable. No, that's a request. I understand you're requesting I get in the car, but you have no reasonable, articulable suspicion to okay. suspect that I've committed a crime to take possession of me I right do. now. You're in a car in which I've done a traffic stop. On. Okay, so well, he's done the traffic stop. Yeah. You already you ruled on that. Pennsylvania yeah. v. Uh, Mims. Sir, I'm not going to argue. Yeah, don't, don't argue case law. You don't know. I'll let you stand out of your car. That's fine. I'm not worried about you. You're not so, letting me. I'm doing it because you work for me. Stand out of your car. But stay there. You work for me. Way, what, right? I'm not going towards you. I don't okay. want to be near you. Okay. You're violent. You're a criminal. I'm not a dog. I don't sit when you tell me to a rollover. Now, let's be clear about what Pennsylvania v. Mims states. It absolutely does state that a police officer can remove you from your vehicle. But case law and precedence is never written on a whim. It's not just about what's in the case law, it's about what's not in the case law. And nowhere in Pennsylvania v. Mims does it say that once you've got out of the vehicle, they can order you back inside it. Now that's the case law that Teresa Bacola uses here. She gets out of the vehicle. They asked her out of the vehicle. That's on them. However, once they ask her to get back inside, there's no case law or precedence protecting them. And, of course, they want the case law to only work in their favor. They want to cherry-pick legal standing in the Constitution. They want to use Pennsylvania v. Mims against her to get her out of the vehicle. But when she uses the same case law when refusing to get back in, that's when these cops get butthurt. What's clear is we need more people like Teresa Bacola. 
She held the Carmel by the police department accountable, not only as a citizen, but also as a citizen journalist and in a court of law when she sued them. And after she sued them, cops did what cops do. They got dirty, they got butthurt, and they wound up retaliating against her. But unfortunately, the second time around was the same as the first time around. She was still educated, she still knew her rights, and she was still commanding and demanding both accountability and respect. Her original video and channel will be pinned in the description of this video and in the comment section. Make sure you subscribe to her, tell her accountability for all sent you, and that's the reason I stopped you today. I am uh, about to face, I believe it's a Carmel cop. I'm pretty sure this is Maldonado. Hi, good afternoon. Can I see your license, registration, insurance? Uh, how can I help you today, um, I'm Officer stopping. Maldonado? Hi, I'm stopping you because the registration and the car is expired as of, oh, easy. As of uh, no November of 2022. Uh, okay, I'm going to remain silent. Okay, can I see your license, registration, insurance? If I present you with papers, Maldonado? Yes. Uh, I, just, I just need your license, the registration, and the insurance. Okay, if I present you with any papers, can they be used against me in a court of law? So, I need your driver's license, your registration, and insurance. Some people have the misconception that your constitutional rights and the amendments to the Constitution only apply when you're in a courtroom. They apply to all aspects of government and police encounter. Notice how this cop has no idea what to say. She says, I'd like to invoke my Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. Moron cop is stumped. She also asks if anything in this traffic stop can be used against her in a court of law. Another good question. Cop is stumped. See, this is what happens when morons wear badges. You ask legitimate questions with legal standing and case law precedents, and they have no idea what that means because they go through like two and a half hours of training. So they just revert back to their tyrant tactics to get you to do what they want you to do. Okay, if I present you with any papers, are they going to be used against me in a court of law? So, I'm not going to do this back and forth with you. I need your driver's license, registration, insurance. If you do not provide that, I'm going to remove you from the car. You will be arrested, and I'm going to throw the car. And there it is, folks. Teresa Bacola is demanding this moron to do his job. And when this moron doesn't know how to do his job or have any understanding of the law that dictates how he does his job... Immediately, he goes to threats. And this cop must have it twisted because he says he's not going to go back and forth with her. He's there to do his job and to serve the community. His job is literally to go back and forth with the people that pay his wage. Um, okay, then if I'm going to so answer any questions. California, okay, if I'm going to answer any questions. Stop, okay. okay. Which is, this is a lawful traffic stop. You need to present your driver's license, your registration, and your insurance. That's all I need from you. Okay. This video ain't that long, guys. This cop is continuously saying that your, your information is all I need from you. Not once in the several minutes this video has been playing has she refused to abide by the state, local, federal laws or provide her information. She simply has questions, legal questions, that she wants answered. And this cop is too stupid to remember that it's his job to answer those questions. Okay, if I'm going to answer any questions or present any papers you to you, to then questions. I want an attorney. I don't need you to say anything. Just I'd like an attorney. That are required. I'd like an attorney. You don't need an attorney. Well, there you have it, folks. This cop is clearly the most trustworthy of the batch. Uh, you don't need an attorney. A police officer telling you during questioning that you don't need an attorney is like a football coach telling his players that they just don't need pads. They're there for a reason to keep you safe. But then again, we give a badge to almost anybody. If I'm going to present any papers or answer any questions, I'd like an attorney. Okay. 
So, so I can wait, or you want to get your supervisor here, please. Okay, so once again, I just need your license, registration, insurance. That's all I need. I'd like your supervisor, please. Do you please. not have a license? I would like your supervisor, please. Okay. So that's not how this works. It is how this works. I'll give you the phone number, and you can call. And you can call. I'm not calling. You can get your supervisor when we're done here. With this traffic stop, I will give you all the information, and you can call the supervisor. I would like your supervisor, please. Okay. I'm not going to keep going around and around with you. So, license, registration, insurance, are you going to provide those items? I would like your supervisor, and I'm going to remain silent. Okay, remain silent all you want. Right. Now, Teresa's watched a lot of these videos, and she did what every single one of you at home should do. When you're in a traffic stop, lock all your doors. Secondly, make sure you leave a quarter of an inch of your window open. You don't need more than that to present your paperwork. Also, in this case, local and federal law states that you don't even have to physically give them your paperwork. You only need to produce it, which means you can literally put it up to the window. Lastly, if you've been stopped by the police, are being stopped right now, or you're going to be stopped in the future, make sure you keep close eye on this part. Case law has been upheld several times, most recently in 2022 in San Diego. A police officer cannot cross the plane of your window. If he does, it constitutes an illegal search and seizure and a violation of your Fourth Amendment right. A police officer cannot open the door during a traffic stop, henceforth violating your Fourth Amendment right. Recently, a case was thrown out when several pounds of narcotics were found in a person's vehicle. The police officer opened the door. The Supreme Court upheld that decision that the case should be thrown out because the police officer violated his Fourth Amendment rights. The Constitution is a safeguard for the people against cops like this. So if you're ever in a traffic stop, make sure you use all these tips. Step out of the vehicle. Okay, all right, I'll step out of the vehicle in one second. I just wanna make sure that I understand what's happening, okay? If I do not violate my Fourth and Fifth Amendment rights, then you are going to confine me. Is that correct? So look up Pennsylvania versus Mims. I, I know that that, that, that requires me to get out of the vehicle. I got that, and I will do that. This really comes back to bite him in the And she knows Pennsylvania v. Mims because she's watched Accountability for All. These cops will have a small notebook. And in this notebook, there's usually like two or three pieces of case law that they have zero understanding of. They don't understand what it means. They just know that in this situation, I read this. In this situation, I read that. It's kind of jarring that most of the time case law is brought up. It's the citizen that understands it, not the dirty cop. Under duress, okay? I just want to make sure that I understand. Just listen to me for If I violate my fourth and fifth amendment rights, you are going to confine me. Is that correct? Just listen. All I need is those documents, okay? Okay, and there's also those documents. I'm going to arrest you. I do not want to do that. I just need those documents from you. First of all, let's not get it twisted. He does want her to be arrested. But I think it's funny. The cops just need it, right? And that's what he says. He goes, I don't want to arrest you. I just need those documents. It's like when you walk up to, like, uh, someone walks up to a dealer, right? And they're like, oh, come on, man. I need my fix. And they're like, oh, no. Like, I need, I need, I need, I need some money. And then you're like, oh, man. I need it. I need it real bad. Your personal information is like catnip to these cops. Okay. Okay. You, you are dictating how this traffic stop is going to go. No, you're dictating, no, and now you you're are. threatening me. Okay. So, now you're so, threatening so this me. Is, this is an infra a traffic infraction. You're turning this into a criminal, a misdemeanor criminal case. You, you can go to jail over this expired registration for not giving me those items. I don't want to do all this stuff. I don't okay. Know why you're doing this? I okay, so I I will present you with those papers. Please, just but I papers. okay, but I want to uh, clarify that it is under duress. Clarify whatever you want. I'm being menaced, okay. and I am going to present it to you under duress. Present me those as long as you present me those documents. That's that's all I need. That's all we can request. Okay, so you're refusing me an attorney. 
and you're going to force me to violate my right to remain silent so right now and my right to be, be secure in my person's house of papers and effects is that is that what's happening so i don't know what you learned on youtube but you are incorrect on all that stuff i need those three items from you that's all i need for a in simple infraction you are going to get arrested and this vehicle is going to get impounded if you don't provide those items i do not know why you want to do that you because are those are those are my show. rights those are my rights and I'm invoking my rights you can invoke and you're forcing you me to violate I my rights or you will take me you, or you will take me to jail is that correct I'm gonna take you to jail for not providing those items. okay all right as long as I had you guys say that on camera all right so I'm gonna get those papers and I'll present them to you under duress okay I don't know how you're under duress I've been Polite and cordial with you. Not being polite and cordial, you're threatening me. Are, are those firearms, uh, are they loaded? Of course they are. Okay, is that firearm loaded? All the time. Okay, then I'm being threatened. This is not being polite. It is in a holster. I have not this is not it. being polite. You're threatening that you're going to rip me out of the car and arrest me if I don't violate my Fourth no, Amendment I rights. You're dictating how this is going to go. If you do not provide those items, I get I to dictate. Be... I'm one of the people. Okay. I'm the one with the power. I'm the one with the power. I've already done that, dude. Okay. You don't recognize me? I have no idea who you are. That's why I'm asking for these items. What is that? That's what I got. And just your drive license. That's all I'm missing. This is expired as of 2021. Remain silent. Okay. So you have a driver's license. Remain silent. Okay. I don't answer any questions. That was very simple. I don't know why you want to make it this far. Uh, I can get out of the car. Yes, I can. If you want to remain in the car, can you just sit right there or stand on the sidewalk? I, I, I'm going to stand right here. You're not going to order me around, okay, Officer Gerald Maldonado? You're detained right now, okay? On, uh, so, and what crime have I committed? Just have a seat right what there. What crime have I committed? Have a seat right there. What crime no, have I committed? And we all know why Teresa hasn't been arrested right now, and that's for two reasons. Number one, we already went over it. Pennsylvania v. Mims states that a police officer can remove you from the vehicle. There's nothing in Pennsylvania v. Mims that says a police officer can make you get back into the vehicle. Number two, main reason that she's not being arrested right now is because this cop just found out who she is. No, he didn't. He knew exactly who she was. In fact, who she was is the reason that she pulled him over. She sued him. He went hands-on. He arrested her. Now he's doing this retaliatory stop to instill fear. But once he realizes she's not bended the knee and she's still standing up for herself this time the way she did the first time, he needs to get his tail between his legs so he can run. And you have a driver's license, so you do believe in some form of, of laws, right? I'm being threatened. That's the reason that I violated my Fourth Amendment rights, and you guys agreed that you were doing that. Genius. Genius. Do you know what the Fourth Amendment protects? Right now, I'm not answering anything right now, okay? Well, you have to I'm answer my questions. You're my public servant, okay, darling? Can you sit back in your No. I don't take orders from you. Is your body camera running? Always. You guys have a habit of shutting your body cameras on and off. Right now if you want to see that. Do you want me to move my car? Yeah. 
Yeah, you know who I am? So, I know who you are from here. So you're not the registered owner of the vehicle. Okay. Um, this time I'm going to give you a warning since you're not the registered owner. <laughs> um, Just g give me the papers. I can't give you a ticket for the car that's not yours, you know what I mean? I see his name in his uniform, but let's see it in his civil rights lawsuit. And this is a copy of the 1983 USC complaint and lawsuit taken out against Officer Maldonado. And the reason for this stop. You're live right now. You're live. You're live. Off of her right now. You're depriving her of her right. Wow. If you deprive me of my wow. liberty, I am going to sue you. Carmel ten million dollars. Yeah, look at it. I'm just getting a warning. Am well, I? If I see you driving, just getting a warning. What? You're not the registered owner of the vehicle, so I cannot cite you for expired registration because it's not your car. So why are you going to be responsible for a car that's not yours? Remain silent. I'm just explaining to Remain you. Remain silent. Go away. And Teresa was exactly right. Things went from he's going to remove her from the vehicle and he violated her rights physically on the steps of the police department to now he's just explaining Go things. Again, Go tell away. Bye. Bye. That's the walk of shame right there. Walk of shame. Bye. Teresa is a true patriot. All three criminal charges related to her arrest at the Carmel-by-the-Sea Police Department were dismissed by the District Attorney's Office on July 12, 2023. And she did it without counsel. Like I said... Her channel and the original video link are in the description. Make sure you subscribe, tell her Accountability for All sent you, and support her. She was arrested, she had her rights violated, and she resisted that tyranny and that arrest. As you know, you can resist an unlawful arrest. If there's no reason for the arrest, you cannot have resisted an effective arrest. And cases like these are seldom dismissed because you have prosecutors and judges that will bear back the blue without question. And I bet those of you, including trolls, that saw that original video of her arrest thought that she'd be sitting in a jail cell by now. Well, that just isn't the case because all three charges were dropped. The police came out on the bottom when normally they're on top of you, tasing you, stripping your freedom, and violating your rights. And the cops just couldn't let that go, could they? They couldn't just let a free American be free. They violated her rights, they learned a valuable lesson, and they could have went on with their day. But that just wasn't a possibility. Because being a tyrant is just too overpowering of an urge. So they pulled her over. And they retaliated against her. So that way they could show her, this time, who's boss. Last time you were arrested, you sued us, and our arrest didn't hold up in court. Well, maybe this time it will. And maybe this time, we can just continue to violate your rights. We can continue to arrest you. And we'll just arrest you until something sticks. She wasn't afraid of those tyrants. I will tell you one thing. I live by a motto, okay? And I believe Teresa Bacola lives by this motto, that I would rather die on my feet than live on my knees. Teresa is living for freedom, for justice, equality, and accountability every single day. She's a shining and true example that we the people of the United States of America can support, defend, and uphold the Constitution of these United States of America. Because at the end of the day, we are united, not just as citizens of this country, but globally as, as citizens of the world. We have the ability, against all odds, in time of extreme duress, to stand up against tyranny, to band together, and to stand down 
an overly oppressive enemy. Now, I've seen a lot of things in my life. I've seen a lot of things throughout the life of this channel. And a lot of us, uh, you guys at home, have seen a lot of this stuff with me. And every single day, I say to myself, I can't be surprised. You know, th there's nothing now that would surprise me. And I continue to be pleasantly surprised by people like Teresa. Most of you know my story. Uh, I was I was homeless at one point, and I was uh, you know I was having a lot of issues with addiction. I never thought that one day um, I would create this beautiful channel, and that a hundred fifty thousand of the best people in this planet would stand behind me and help in my fight. My fight turned into our fight for freedom and accountability. I never thought that I would wear a ring. And then I would be married. Life is what you make of it. And if you make nothing out of it, it'll make nothing out of you. Our ability to change our stars, change the principles of life, and follow our dreams will always lead us to the ultimate prize. And that prize can't be quantified by subscribers or views. It's quantified by the path you take in life, the twist and the turns, and sometimes the wrong way down a one way, that lead you to true joy. My wedding was a small affair with less than 45 people. But those 45 people were the people that were closest to me. Those people were the closest friends that I have. And I wish I could have shared that wedding with all of you. However, I'm sharing it with you now, the same way Teresa is sharing her legacy with you. Part of her origin story, what makes her special what gives her the rise and the shine to fight against tyranny every day. It's that fight, that fire that burns within you, that leads you to your dreams, whether it be in your personal life, like mine with my marriage, or in my professional life, to me, being able to sit here now and speak to you. We find that through the strength that lies within us. If you're lucky, you will feel that passion, that burning fire once in your life. I felt that passion, that burning fire when I filmed my first video. I'm one of the few that felt that passion and that fire twice, the second time on my wedding day. Teresa is going to continue to share that passion and that fire every single day, as should you, until there is only accountability and zero dirty cops left employed. Subscribe to Teresa, tell her accountability for all sent you, and that's the reason I stopped you today.